hello viewers you're welcome to another beautiful tutorial so this is a request from a subscriber and i'm trying to do justice to it so if you would like to know how i made this please watch to the end and also subscribe if you've not let's go right into the video so the right material to be used for this style is organdy material not organza but i could not find organza while making it so i use a glass taffeta three yards of glass taffeta one yard of dull face material half yard of lace and half yard of another dull face material so we starting with the uh, basic uh, bodies the upper parts the full length uh, the full length of the dress is 19 inches and the half length is 9 inches so i've measured out 9 inches plus 1 inch there and also have 1 inch for my zip allowance so i will go right over to my neck width and take 2.5 and for the neck depth of the front, I'll take 1.5 and 1 inch for the back. The 1.5 is for the front, then the 1 inch is for the back. So I will connect it to the 2.5 inch, inches neck width that I made earlier. That is for the front, and the second one is for the back. So I will extend the back on to the zipper line, the 1 inch zipper line that I have over there. So I'll go ahead and trim that off. That is the back neckline that I'm trimming off. The next thing is to go right to the neck width and the armhole. I will join them together. We are making a halter neckline. So I'll just join this together. The armhole will meet the neckline. And I'll go ahead and trim both the back and the front off. Remember, I'm cutting both the back and the front of this dress together. So after trimming the armhole off, I will separate both the back and the front and trim off the front neckline. So this is for the front and it will be cut on food. I'm labeling it. And the back as well will be cut times two. So I'll go and adjust the back. I'll adjust the zipper area. This is highly optional. I will adjust it by half an inch. I will come up by half an inch and connect it back to the seam, li seam line. To the size seam rather and i'll trim that half an inch off so this pattern is ready and i will use it to cut on my fabric so having cut on my fabric i cut the door face for the lace because the lace is transparent so i cut it out and i also cut out the lining that i will be using i want to line the lace and also line the inside so i will position the lace right side of the door face to wrong side of the lace and i will sew the sides together so i'll close up the side and as well to the lining so having closed this up i'll bring the two of them together and match them correctly right side to each other and I'll close up the armhole, only the armhole, leaving out the neckline. And I'll notch an iron. Having notched, this is how it looks like the inside and the outside. This is how it looks like. And it's ready to be joined to my skirt. So, for my skirt pattern, I remember I said the full length of this dress is 19 inches. And the half length already is 9 inches, which we've taken out. So what is remaining is the waist circumference is um, 22 inches. 22 inches is the waist length, uh, circumference. So for the skirt length, since we already have nine, uh, uh, 9 inches as the half length, we'll minus it from the 19 inches and it will give us 10 inches. 
Then this 10 inches, I would times it by 3. You can either times by 3 or 2.5 or even 2 inches, depending the, um, on the amount of fabric you have. So when I times mine by 3, it gives me 30 inches. That it will be for my skirt length. Then for my skirt width, is my waist circumference, which is 22 inches, by 10 inches, and it will give me 220 inches. Likewise, you can times this by 12, you can times by 15, depending on the age you are working for. This is for a 2-year-old. If I'm working for a 5 to 7-year-old, I'll times by 15 or 14 inches. So I'll times the waist circumference by 14 or 15 inches. So I'll be working with 10 inches. So my skirt length will be 30 inches and my skirt width will be 220 inches. So these are the two I will be working with. I times my waist circumference by 10. This is for a two-year-old. On this, uh, on this uh, paper, I'm going to illustrate what I will do on my fabric. This paper, I already have 2 inches or 2.5 inches all around. That is my seam allowance. You will leave out 2 inches or 2.5 inches all around your fabric. Assuming this is our fabric. And inside the boxes, I've already marked out 2 2 inches. So what we are going to do here is that we are going to achieve this using a Canadian smoking method. All the boxes, all the squares inside are 2 2 inches. So I will go over to demonstrate what I will, I will be doing on my fabric. I will start with the first line. I will, I will slant it like so, just the way you, are, you see me doing. Remember, I had already left 2 inches up. So after the first one, I will leave out one box and go over to the next one. Leave out one box, go over to the next box. Leave out, then after this one, there is no other box to go over to. Then I will leave out the last box. This is for my first line. Then for my second line, I will leave it out entirely. I will not mark on it and I will move over to the third line. So let me use another color of pen so that I will not be, it will not be confusing you. So I will leave out the first line I marked and go over to the second line. I don't want the first and the second to be on the same angle. Leave out a, a boss, go over to another, leave out a boss, go over to another, and leave out a boss and move to another. So this is exactly what I'll be doing to the end. So as you can see, the markings are not on the same line. The first and the second line and the markings are not on the same line. So I will leave out this boss, the fourth boss, and move over to the fifth boss. And repeat exactly what I have on my first boss on that fifth boss. I'll start with the first boss. Leave out a boss, move to another one. Exactly what I have on the first line that is why the i'm using the same color of marker so that you really understand what i'm doing so i'll mark it all through then leave out another line entirely and repeat exactly what i have on my second line which has the red uh, biro red pen on it yes i will i'll mark exactly what i have there on that on that line so leave out the first one, mark the boss after it, continue with what we've been doing earlier. So this is exactly what you'll be doing on your fabric till you, you get to the end. It's quite time consuming, but the result is worth it. So for the last line, you leave out the one before it and move to the last one. But in case you uh, after this line you still have one other line i'll tell you what to do one other line after this you know there is no other line to leave out to and move to so after marking this one this uh, paper i'm working on has a uniform number of bosses but in case after marking on this line you still have another one line below you just leave it out entirely you don't mark on it because there is no other line to move to. If you want to move to any other line, it will be your same allowance line. So after this line and there is another line that is not marked, 
Just leave it out entirely and it will be among your same allowance. So this is what we'll have and this is what we'll be marking on our fabric. So I've marked it on my fabric that I'm working with, but you can see the reflection is much. So I'll be illustrating with this fabric that is not highly reflecting. So what I did on my fabric, assuming here is my three years, you know, the fabric comes by 60. Then I, I have three years of fabric. I will divide it at the middle. If it is divided into two, it will now be by 30. Three years by 30. So I will divide it at the middle and join it with uh, the other parts. So now I'll have 30 by uh, six years. The width will be six years and the length will be 30. Remember, I'm making my skirt um, 10 inch inches by 3, which is 30. My skirt length is 30. And the fabric comes by 50. So I will divide it into two to have 30. And I will join it to have a longer fabric. So after marking on my uh, fabric like so, you can use a needle. You pick up one end of the needle, of the markings, sorry. You pick one up one end and you join it with the other. So this is what I'll do. And I'll secure the knot. So you secure it very well so that it doesn't loosen. This is what you'll be repeating on all the markings if you are using a needle or if you are using a machine. I'll be using a machine actually and I'll show you how to get through that with a machine as well. So let's repeat it on the second line. You pick up that end and you join it with the other end. There are several methods of achieving this, but this is a Canadian smoking method. So secure the end and move over to the third one. So let's do the third one so that it will be more clearer. Pick up one end, get to another, join them together and secure. So just have patience and go through this. It will take your time actually, but like I said, the result is what the time consumed. So this is what it will look like. You can see it's already forming, coming out. This is the back. I'm just working with the first line and it's already coming out. So if you are to use a machine, I'll be using a machine so that it will be faster. I'll pick up both ends and match them together and make a little stitch. Just a little. Like two stitches at that place. Two to three stitches are okay. Just secure it. Just you just stitch it and back stitch so that it will be secure. Pick it up at that end and at that angle make a little stitch. This is what I'll be doing. Pick up this and make a little stitch at that angle. Pick it up and make a little stitch at the angle. So this is what I'll be doing with my machine. And I've successfully done all this on the six years of fabric. Remember now the width is now six years. The length was 30 years. So I've done all this. This took me time. But as you can see, it is beautiful. So for the lining, I had already folded into um, a half circle. This is meant to be done with uh, an A-line flare. But I want to go through it with a shortcut method. So I marked out my waist circumference at the eye, and I'll be marking out 11 inches. Remember my length is 10 inches, so I'll be marking out 11 inches, 1 inch for the seam allowance. So if you're using an A-line skirt, of which I will still go through that, mark out the length should be 10 inches plus 1 inch allowance. So after marking out my half length, I'll cut it out. I remember I said this will be, is, it should be done on an A-line flay. So if the down of this a, a half circle is too wide for you, reduce it by 5 to 6 inches by both sides. 
If I reduce by 5 inches, that means I've reduced 10 inches because it is folded into 2. If you reduce by 6, 12 inches. So, but if you like the wideness like so, which I wouldn't advise, you leave it like this. Or just go ahead and cut a normal A-line say a line skirt so that it will not be too flay. So this is what I have after reducing it. And I'll go ahead and measure the down part. If it is too big for me, I'll still go ahead and reduce it so that it will not be too wide. So after measuring, I'll bring my um, already um, smoked fabric and I will gather one part of the down and join it to the A-line gown. So after gathering it, I will put them right side to each other. On the down part, on the down part, I will join the gathered part to the down part. Remember, I only gathered one side of it. I gathered the side that has the excess allowance because on my fabric, I had one extra line that wasn't marked. So after joining it to the downside of the um, half circle, which is my lining, this is how it will look. You flip it over, flip it over, and the waist, this is where the, you attach to your upper part, this is the waist. Then you bring up uh, um, the other part of it again and gather it to, the, your, to your waist measurement. Gather it to your waist measurement and sew on it as well. So I've sewn on my waist and this is the outcome. See, the skirt is already coming out, it's forming. So for my waist, I didn't sew it the way I made the down. The down, I, I did it in a way that it will be concealed. So remember, I still have this size open, the two sides. I will pleat all those to match the two sides. Those two sides, I will pleat them to match the two sides. And I will sew it the way I sew my waist area. I will do it to the other part as well. Pleat them and sew. After doing that, we will bring our front upper part and our skirt part together since both of them are ready and i'll position them the way i would be joining them right side to each other and i'll join them together uh, the, oh, the waist um, are of the same length so i'm starting from there if they're not of the same length get the middle of both of them and match them together then you start pinning so I will go ahead and sew after pinning this. Remember my lining is left out. So I have a lining I cut out as well. I will bring in my lining and pin as well. I will pin and take to my machine and stitch. So this is the result. After stitching, I have already attached my zipper. Please, I have a tutorial of how to attach this zipper. You can watch that out. And this is how the inside will look like after doing all that. As you can see, it's already neat. So the inside already looks beautiful, likewise the outside. So that's the one advantage of sewing this uh, your, your zip this way. And for the outside, remember our neckline is still open. We will take the measurement. I took the measurement of this neckline and it was 11 inches, both the front and back. The front was 5.5 and the back was 5.5. That is 11 inches. So I added 1 inch on the 11 inches and it, it gave me 12 inches. So I went ahead and cut out a lace material and a, a door face material of 2.5 inches i want this to be 1.5 after sewing 2.5 by 12 inches so after sewing half an inch up and half an inch down i will end up having 1.5 inches you can as well have one inch as the width of your band i will close the up and close the sides so i've closed the off sides and closed the side as well and i attach a button loop to the upper part So having done this, I'll get my midpoint. 
of that hairband. On the front part again of the dress, I will get my midpoint. So I will bring in this and open it up. And I will match those points together. And I will continue pinning. So after pinning one side of the front, the front, you will move to the other side. And for the back, you can open up your zipper and flip it over like so. Take the end and match to where the zip ends. This is the zipper area. And pin. If you measure it correctly, you will see that those two um, neck areas will almost be joining at the same point. If they are not joining, they will be almost, they will be so close to get to each other. Take this as well and pin. And take to your sewing machine and stitch them down. I'll go ahead and stitch it down. The lining is still open. So, you see, those two ends of the neckline are almost joining. They are almost meeting at a point. So, for the lining, fold in half an inch inside like this. Fold it in half an inch or through to cover those as a seam inside. Then go through it all around. So go ahead to your machine and sew it. And also I will be attaching my button since I have a loop already. And the dress will be ready. So this is the outcome of what I have after all the things. Is this not beautiful? It is. Please endeavor to give me a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. I have a lot coming on this channel. Thank you and bye.